Every day I spend an hour or two just searching for AI news, but honestly, I'm getting tired of it. So I'm gonna build an AI assistant to do exactly that. And I'm gonna be using VS Code and Vext, which makes building AI apps easier than ever before. And if we get stuck at any point, we'll use our friend ChatGPT to help us out. So let's go into Vext and create a new AI project. And I'm gonna name it AI News Research Bot. So now we only have the query and the output, which obviously doesn't do much. So let's click on the plus button and execute a function. Here we have a bunch of options, as you can see, Wolfram Alpha, Archive, Wikipedia. But for this, we either wanna do DuckDuckGo or Google. And I think for more accurate, unbiased results, I'm going with DuckDuckGo. Let's save that. As you can see, building the pipeline is super easy. Now, if we test it out in the playground, first we have to enable it. It's not gonna give us concise answers because we haven't implemented a large language model just yet. Yeah, as you can see, this is a straight dump from the DuckDuckGo API. So let's go back to our pipeline, click on plus and add generate a response. This is the fun part where we get to put in the LLM. So we have a bunch of options. Obviously, GPT-4 is gonna be the best. And since it's hosted on Azure, it's actually gonna be safer and faster than if you use the OpenAI API. Creativity, this is the temperature. For this, we probably wanna do like kind of low, 0.3. Purpose, let's keep this simple. Let's do you are a research assistant. By the way, both of these are system prompts. It's just easy way for you to see how to format it. Behavioral, let's do something fun. Format everything in full caps and save it. And we already have a solid LLM pipeline in like what, two minutes? It's kind of crazy. Let's go into playground and let's give it a shot. Elon Musk news and let's see the response. And as you can see, it's clearly working. Before we make it more advanced, let's actually implement it into VS Code. So I'm going to create a new file, just going to name it main.py, boom, boom. If you don't know how to code, don't worry, I'll show you exactly what you should do. Click on output and here we get a curl API request. Let's just copy the code and go into ChatGPT and say, give me a Python code for this. Super simple prompt, anybody can do this. And I'm just going to paste it inside and let ChatGPT do the coding for us. But as you can see, like a few lines of code and that's all we need. Let's copy this, go into VS Code and just paste it inside. Here we need to put our API key. So let's go back to Vext and go to Quick Access API key. So create an API key tutorial and select the AI news research bot generate. Now obviously keep your API key private. I'm going to delete this one before I upload the video. So don't even try it and save it in the variable. Boom. Now query. So here you can do like mm -mm -mm, open AI news February 2024. Now later I'll use a list and run it through a for loop. That way we don't have to manually do this. Let's save that. And a channel token, this is important. This is useful for if you're doing like multiple people, if you have it on a website and maybe you want to make it so that every single person using it has the same chat, which by the way, for that, you should go into AI projects, just a quick tip and turn on the memory. And this is actually right here memory. Anyways, I'm just gonna name it, you know, David Andre, my name. This is the project. It should match right here. As you can see, the code is super simple. If you want, you can even ask ChatGPT, add more explanatory comments to the code, right? That way you really know what's going on. Let's actually test it out, right? Why not? And hopefully, fingers crossed, we get a response from the Vext API. Okay, and we have a response from the API inside of VS Code. So what I'm going to actually do to make it a bit easier to understand, I'm going to explain everything line by line. Even if you're not a programmer, you can do this. So we import the request library to make HTTP requests in Python. This is how we access APIs, websites, all of that. Then we need to set the URL. So we declare a variable and uh, set the URL provided to us by Vext. So if you remember in the project, click on output. This is the URL, right? Then query, this is basically the prompt. This is what we are sending there. So Google DeepMind News February 2024 is just a test to test it out. API key is obviously your unique key that you shouldn't share with anybody. Then we have the headers. This is to format uh, how we send the HTTP request. Then we format the data payload. I mean, technically we could put it just here, but the reason why it's nice like this is again, I'm going to put this into a for loop. That way we can have multiple queries at once so it can do like proper actual research. Then we make the post request to the server. You know, we save that into a variable called response. Then we need to extract the text. So we get the text by this and then print out the text. Now let's try it out. And there you see it. We have some news about Mark Zuckerberg. And obviously this is ju just for testing. So we now know that it works. 
and we have the code in VS Code. See, the true power of Vext is that anyone can build an AI app, but most people haven't even heard of Vext. That's why if you watch until the end, you will have a massive advantage over everyone else. Now, it offers actually four pricing plans. The free pricing plan is amazing because you can try it out with zero risk. Since Vext was kind enough to sponsor this video, I got the pro plan unlocked in full. So let's go back into our pipeline and actually make it a bit more serious. I think the temperature is good. Maybe we can make it even lower, like 0 0.25 roughly. So in the purpose, I'm actually going to use a prompt I prepared from before. That way I don't have to type out everything. You are an objective and unbiased news classifier who accurately ranks AI news. Enter. And then we delete the full caps and let's put something a bit more professional. So your task is to analyze and classify the AI news you receive. Format every news story into clean JSON with these fields, title, importance, date, and content. Format the title JSON field as a short one sentence headline describing the story. Format the content field as a medium length paragraph with the most essential context of that news. So yeah, this will make the response way more organized and we can actually use this to easily classify it and even build it into like some database. The beauty of Vext is that you can do anything with it. Format the importance field as an objective rating one through 10 of how big the news story is. Now to make this actually, you know, usable, we need to give it some examples. Actually one more prompt. So now that we have the basic prompting out of the way, we need to give it examples because if you just, you know, do form like rate it one through 10, it, have, it has no reference point. It will just give everything like seven, eight. So let's give it some fun examples. <laughs> this one. When Sam Altman was fired from OpenAI, that's definitely a 10 importance. We can all agree on that. When Google Gemini was refusing to generate images of white people, I'd rate that as seven. Example. If there is a new lawsuit against OpenAI, which happens like every other day, let's be honest. This is a beautiful example. ChatGPT by itself, you know, GPT-4, it would give it like eight. Oh, lawsuit, scary lawsuit. But it's nothing like OpenAI has a new lawsuit every other day, literally. And let's do one more. As you can see, we've greatly improved the LLM. So let's hit save. And actually, we can do a test in the playground. So NVIDIA February 2024 news. Okay, beautiful. As you can see, the new prompting is working. We have a title. NVIDIA surpasses $2 trillion valuation. Importance 8. I would say that's pretty good. Date 27 February 2024. So two days ago. And then the content, which is a single paragraph explanation. This is great. Now, by the way, you can use the log feature inside of Vext to see every single uh, call you do with the query, every single query you do, every single call of the APIs. Here we have timestamp, query, output, log detail, and rack score. Now, rack score is for retrieval augmented generation. It's when you use a data set, which is another feature. So here I have a data set of AI papers, and then I had a different project where I call the AI papers and it's very simple. You just click on plus and do search data set. So I did that here and I just select which data set. So archive AI papers, it loads up the free papers and then number of reference. This is the nearest neighbors using the vector search. If you don't know what vector embeddings are, basically it's going to search up the three most similar results. I mean the five, <laughs> five, you can set it to three, you can set it to one up to 20 and then you can generate a response all the same and it will pull up the data from those archive papers. You know, obviously for this use case, we don't need RAG, but if you do need RAG, you get a score in the logs, which is very useful because it tells you how effective the RAG is. So as you can see, if it's under 80, it's low relevance, but we can actually go into detail and see exactly what happened, right? So this is our latest NVIDIA research. So this is the DuckDuckGo API and it gets this. And then GPT-4 generates a response in the format, in the JSON format, rewrites it, makes it clean. Very nice. We can actually do the same right inside of VS Code, right? It should work because we just updated the prompting. By the way, the logs feature, this is a massive advantage Vext has over Langchain. On top of, you know, it being 10 times easier to build anything. In Langchain, you don't really have like an easy way to see the prompts, to like debug what happened. So here you do that, you do have that. And as you can see, we see actually the API call from VS Code as well. So it's not only from the playground, it's every single query you do. And in the dashboard, we can see our status of queries. So it's funny because, you know, on the pro plan, we have 6,000 queries, which if you did that just through GPT-4 API, you would definitely pay more than, you know, 48 or $60. So you're actually going to be saving money if you use VEX. Okay, then there it is. And actually what's surprising is that it gave us multiple news stories. How many do we have? We have one, 
two, three, four. That's actually a nice surprise. Mark Zuckerberg's public image improves, importance five. Mark Zuckerberg's net worth skyrockets, importance six. Mark Zuckerberg's to retrieve annual dividends, four. Mark Zuckerberg discusses AI in South Korea, five. Okay, and as you can see, it's nicely formatted. So we could actually, you know, pass this into JSON and create a database out of this or add this into website. That's the advantage of VEX. You can't do that by using ChatGPT or even a custom GPT. If you can't just put that into a website. With Vex, you can because it's an API. And by the way, you know, we have 30 lines of code and most of them are comments. If you were to implement Rack, this would easily double or maybe triple. And if you were to do like proper OpenAI API calling with some parsing and formatting, we would definitely cross 100 lines of code. So Vex, to build the pipeline and to test it out, you do zero coding. And to implement it into VS Code, we literally copied this and went into ChatGPT. Anybody can do this, trust me. Just use ChatGPT if you get stuck. Now, this is great, but it's not as useful as it could be because it only searches one result. And actually one improvement that I could do is to go back into LLM and maybe tell it only choose the most significant news story and rate only that one so that we can have a bit more consistency, right? Save that. Now, how do we make this more useful? Obviously, we can use a for loop and a list, but let's say I don't know that, right? Well, let's just copy our code, go to ChatGPT and say, how do I ask multiple questions instead of just one query? And then here is my code. I'm just going to keep it vague on purpose to show you the true power of using ChatGPT. To ask multiple questions instead of just one, you can modify the query variable to include multiple queries. So as you can see, it created a list. Let me just copy this, nothing else. And we replace the query with this. Let's change this. So let's do OpenAI, Google, DeepMind, NVIDIA, Sam Altman, so Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg. And last but definitely not least, let's do open source. So seven strings in a list. So now we can actually click one button to run the code and get seven responses. We only change the queries, so we have to do more than that. Let's go back to ChatGPT and follow what it said. Right, so ChatGPT made an assumption there that the API can receive multiple queries since that's not the case because we know that from the project by the way if you get stuck again documentation right here so vex has documentation for even more information so let's go back and just correct it the api can only handle one query at a time if the api can only handle one query at a time you'll need to loop through each query make individual requests for each and then handle each response accordingly here is how you can modify your code to accommodate this limitation so let's scroll down and we do a for loop. Again, I didn't even mention for loops. I just said the API can only handle one query at a time. Like you don't even have to know the basic programming concepts. Again, I can just copy this. By the way, there's always this copy code in ChatGPT, so I just literally can copy the entire thing. So let's see the changes that were made. For query in queries, loop through each query in the list of queries. Okay, this is making it, I mean, it's good to have it, but I don't know why it's overcomplicating. Let me just call it out. You are overcomplicating this for no reason. I don't know why ChatGPT like added this try catching. I didn't ask for that at all. Oh yeah, okay, so it makes sense. So it wasn't sure if yeah, if the list of queries was going to do trouble, so it I guess it should have asked me instead of assuming it and then like trying to you know, play it safe with the try accept. It's still doing the status code, which is very interesting. You know what? I'm actually like I don't know what's going on with the ChatGPT. Like, see, Vex is working perfectly, VS Code is working perfectly, but ChatGPT is adding, like, unnecessary stuff. I mean, it's definitely good when you're sending HTTP requests for websites. I mean, no doubt about it. But I'm trying to keep it simple for you guys so that anybody can follow. What we need to do is create a for loop, right? For query in queries data equals... Now, by the way, this has to be, you know, indented. Python is all about indentation, so all of this has to be inside of the for loop block, otherwise it wouldn't run every single time. And literally this is it, like I don't know what ChatGPT did, like all we needed to do is, is this, like all we needed to do is add these two lines and indent the rest. For query and queries, we have the queries list, then we go through every single query and feed that into data, and we make a post request for all of them. Then we only extract the text from the JSON and print the text. Let's run it, and beautiful. We have uh, OpenAI introduces Sora from June. The date is wrong, but the news is correct and the importance is, is very nice. Should probably be even higher, honestly. And as you can see, it's working. The list is working. We are getting multiple news stories. So, wow, this is great. By the way, actually one thing I probably forgot to do. Yeah, this is on me. So 
we are just feeding it news. We don't specify when it's from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do plus AI news from February 2024. So that's on me. I didn't specify that. And now we get every single one of these terms and add AI news from February 2024. That way we actually get recent news. I'm so excited that it works through the list because like now we have an actual research assistant that goes through a list of keywords. And right now I only have seven. I can make it 10, 15, 20, 30, whatever I want. And it searches, it uses the DuckDuckGo API, does the research. Look at that. OpenAI valuation nearly triples in under 10 months. Importance 8. We have a date which looks much more accurate than before. And then OpenAI has successfully completed a funding deal that has significantly increased the company's valuation to 80 billion. Boom, another story, Google DeepMind. Google DeepMind to relaunch image generation AI tool. Boom, NVIDIA. NVIDIA reports, re reports record profits and historic stock market gain. Good importance, date, correct, and the content is formatted great. SEC investigates OpenAI CEO's Altman. What? This is from yesterday. This is very new. I mean, honestly, I might make a video on this. The SEC investigating Sam Altman? That's a big deal. It should be like Importance 9, probably. Now, instead of having to manually search through Google, through Twitter, through YouTube, I can just run this little program and get the latest AI news researched and format it in nicely. Elon Musk, XAI files for fundraising amidst Google Gemini controversy. Some of these I didn't even realize were happening. So this is like super nice. And again, we've built all of that with Vext and VS Code using a very simple pipeline. I mean, we can make this much more complicated. Like I didn't even show you smart functions where you can just do all of these. Actually, Vext chooses which of these is most relevant to the search. So like, there's so much more you can do with Vext and like it makes building AI apps and LLM pipelines easier than ever before. But man, isn't this amazing? Like we've built an entire app entire research agent in like 20, 25 minutes. Like you really couldn't do that without Vex. Go check them out. And if you want, just start with the free plan. There is no risk. It's amazing software. And you know, I talked with the CEO and it's only going to get better. So make sure to check it out. First link in the description.